Today we're talking about um, rivets explained. We need to discuss the difference between a hollow rivet and a solid rivet. And before we go into all the drawings and the diagrams and details, I just want you to actually like see what these look like. So just gotta cooperate with the camera here. Okay, so we've got um, two types of rivets, right? Here's our hollow rivet, the silver, and our solid rivet, the copper. And if you look down the center of the shaft, Look, there's no hole over here. There's a hole. Shocker. Um, so they're color coordinated so you can fully understand what's happening. We're trying to look at um, the assembly when the cap and the post come together for the hollow rivet. And that's generally used for softer materials. And when we have the solid rivets, um, those are used to join a soft material to a hard material. So we're going to go through the anatomy and then bring it all back and then hopefully you'll know how the whole things are assembled. So when you look at the parts, start with the uh, hollow rivet, you have these components and they're supposed to stick together, okay? You have these two tiny things, right? They're supposed to snap together like so. You just push. Um, but when you go to assemble them, you need to make sure that you have your pieces of soft material. I chose pink because it showed up really well in the camera and black because it was a different value than pink. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to take your material and you're going to put the shaft through one of the holes and then the secondary hole so you have your full assembly just like this. And then you're going to take your cap and just push snap it on. Okay. So then it's held in place temporarily. So you can test fit your armor, you can put components together, but this is not a load-bearing joint. The final step is to take your material, rest it on your anvil, and then just hammer straight up and down on that top to make sure that these two are in full compression. And if you don't do it right, sometimes it sort of crumples like a soda can where your shank just sort of bends funny like a hammered over nail. That's okay, it's gonna work. Um, but if you don't like that aesthetic, you can pop one out and put in a replacement one. Now, when you're doing your assembly, let's say we have some component attached to the soft leather, we also need to integrate something that's harder, rigid, you know, like metal. Um, when I say rigid or hard material, it's in reference to steel, brass, aluminum, mostly metals, but you can get away with like hard plastics like polyethylene is what... Um, uh, buckets are like an injection molded polyethylene. A lot of armor and cosplay people like to use that because it's lightweight, it's rigid, and um, it, can, it can really take a beating without doing a lot of damage. So to do that assembly, you're going to need your solid shank. And we really need to discuss the anatomy of the solid shank rivet, right? Because we have that wide flange. So when you see the flange head here, um, it's got this taper to it. And that allows the material to distribute load on the softer side. So the leather gets more surface area, so it's less prone to tearing. But when you're forging over something harder, like steel or copper or aluminum, you don't need all this material. Um, it's going to have a much more structured setting that's going to hold it together. So first we're going to take our white flange. And we're going to insert it through our leather so that the wide flange is on the leather side. And right, there's our leather side. And then we have our steel component, right? And we're going to make sure that as we do this, it comes straight through the side. So we've got that stacked bit. And now we can hammer down the shank of our material to spread over our metal. So the distinctions here we're looking at is with hollow, you're always joining soft to soft. And with solid, you're joining some harder material to the softer material. And the orientation of the rivet, this wide head flange, is going to allow the softer material to be supported when you hammer over this flange head. Okay, so when we look at this design, you're hammering it. And instead of it just compressing and these two components snapping in, we're actually widening this flange so the impacts take it a little bit bigger so that you get this standard kind of cup head button head rivet but the metal here the metal located at the copper side to the steel interface 
spreads wider and wider. So we get it thinner and thinner. And what that does is it pulls the leather closer to the steel and makes you know, our hard material, the steel material, less likely to pop off without compromising the strength of the leather, which is what we're using to wear, right? So the whole point here is you've got to attach hard things to you um, and hard things hurt our soft skin and the leather is a gradient between uh, human skin softness and metals, right? So as we do this joint, we want to make sure the wide flange is distributing load so it doesn't tear through the leather and so that the steel is going to fully encapsulate our body but still be able to move, okay? So ultimately, all you need to know is you have a hammer, you have an anvil, and you're going to hit. And for the solid one, you have a hammer and an anvil, and you're going to hit, but you're going to make sure that that rivet head shape changes from this straight shank to a wider surface. And that's going to give you all the structure you need for your rivets to hold together. We're going to go into complexities of how rivets work at some point, but one thing you just want to be sure of is when you go to do your material, this thickness here, the shank thickness, is generally the same height you want your rivet to be above your metal component in your assembly, okay? And so you can have all the leather you want here. You can have leather here, and you can have another piece of leather here, but what you want to make sure of is as you add these materials, you still have enough shank sticking above your hard surface. So when you hammer it down, all of this sucks together and you still get this profile forged out. That's going to hold component A to component B to your rigid part. Okay, so that's rivets.